we're asked to find f of g of x and determine the domain. To determine f of g of x, notice g of x becomes the input into f of x, and since g of x is equal to one divided by the quantity x plus one, f of g of x equals f of one divided by the quantity x plus one. So now we replace x in the function rule for f with one divided by the quantity x plus one. which is equal to the square root of the input of one divided by the quantity x plus one, and then minus one. So this is the function rule for f of g of x, but we can also simplify the square root, so let's also show that. When we have the square root of a fraction, we can square root the numerator and denominator separately, which means f of g of x is equal to the square root of one divided by the square root of the quantity x plus one, and then we still have minus one, and the square root of one is equal to one, which gives us one divided by the square root of the quantity x plus one minus one. So this might be another way the composite function is expressed, or we can also rationalize the denominator, so let's also show that. We have f of g of x is equal to one divided by the square root of the quantity x plus one, and we still have minus one, but to rationalize the denominator, we would multiply the numerator and denominator by the square root of the quantity x plus one. Simplifying one more time, we have the square root of the quantity x plus one, all divided by x plus one, and then minus one. So either of these three forms are acceptable for f of g of x. And now let's determine the domain of the composite function. The domain of a composite function f of g of x is a set of inputs x in the domain of g of x for which g of x is in the domain of f of x. This sounds a little confusing, so what we'll do is follow the steps below. To find the domain of the composite function f of g of x, number one, we will find the domain restriction of the function rule g of x. Number two, find the domain restriction of the function rule for f of g of x. And then the domain of the composite function f of g of x must contain all the restrictions from one and two. So let's begin by determining the domain restriction for g of x, where g of x is equal to one divided by the quantity x plus one. Division by zero is undefined, and therefore the denominator cannot equal zero. To find the domain restriction, we need to solve x plus one cannot equal zero. If we subtract one on both sides, we have x can't equal negative one, which is the domain restriction for the function rule g of x. Let's go ahead and state that. Again, x can't equal negative one. Using interval notation, this would be the open interval from negative infinity to negative one union, the open interval from negative one to infinity. And now let's find the restriction for the function rule for the composite function. And we can use any of the forms that we have here listed on the left. Let's go ahead and use the bottom form where f of g of x is equal to the square root of the quantity x plus one divided by the quantity x plus one minus one. Well again, we know division by zero is undefined, so once again, x plus one can't equal zero, which means x can't equal negative one. Let's go ahead and list this. But also the number under the square root, the radicand, must be non-negative, meaning greater than or equal to zero, which means x plus one must be greater than or equal to zero. Solving for x, we subtract one on both sides, and we have x must be greater than or equal to negative one. And let's go ahead and list this as well. But notice how x greater than or equal to negative one includes negative one, and we already said x can't equal negative one. So let's rewrite this inequality as just x greater than negative one. And then from here, notice how the restriction for g of x is already included in the restriction for the function rule for the composite function, and therefore the domain of the composite function is just x greater than negative one which using interval notation would be 
the open interval from negative 1 to infinity. Let's go ahead and write this out. The domain of f of g of x is x greater than negative 1. Or using interval notation, we would have the open interval from negative 1 to infinity. I hope you found this helpful.